Hello and uh, welcome back to DevOps Fundamentals by Skillspeed. In this video, we are going to talk about Chef Server. In the last lesson, we spoke about what exactly Chef is, and uh, then we uh, spoke about the Chef architecture and its components. In this video, we are going to talk about, first of all, what exactly is Chef Server. Then we will talk about the components of a Chef Server. Then we will see how many types are there when we talk about the Chef Server. Finally, we will see how to install uh, a Chef Server on a local machine. And then we will talk about how to create it a cancel. And then we will talk about how to create a hosted Chef account. So with that, let's get started. What exactly is a Chef Server? So Chef Server, it's a, it's a central piece of the Chef ecosystem, as we have seen in the last video. And uh, this acts as a hub for storing configuration data. To be more specific, it is responsible for cookbooks, recipes that are applied to the nodes, any kind of metadata of the nodes which are included in the infrastructure which is being managed by Chef. So in a nutshell, Chef server contains all the information which is there about your infrastructure. Each and every uh, information about the node, about the objects, about let's say, um, uh, let's say switches, routers, any of the components which, which makes your complete infrastructure, Chef server will have that information. So what are the components of a Chef server? If you see here on a screen, uh, it comprises of a number of things. The central piece once again is of course uh, Chef server. Uh, Chef server was uh, written in Ruby. However, now it has been completely rewritten in Ur Chef. Now because of this change in the core API for the Chef server, it's way faster and uh, more scalable than the previous versions. However, the Chef client, uh, which is the component which is installed on each and every node, that is uh, still uh, written in Ruby. <coughs> Next is the component called Chef Manage. Uh, this is responsible for uh, the Chef server web UI. Now, this is a Ruby on Rails application that's, that hosts uh, the web interface for the Chef server. Now, Chef Management Console uses the Chef server API for all communication to the Chef server. Next is uh, uh, Bookshelf. Now Bookshelf is used to store cookbook contents like files, templates and so on uh, that have been uploaded to the Chef server with the help of knife upload command. And uh, cookbook content is stored by content checksum. Let's say if two uh, different cookbooks or uh, different versions of the same cookbook include the same file or template, uh, Bookshelf will store that file once only. And the cookbook content managed by Bookshelf is stored in flat files and uh, is separated from the Chef server uh, and for the search index repositories. And all the cookbooks are actually stored in a dedicated repository on the Chef server inside Bookshelf. Next in the list, we have uh, uh, message queues. Now, RabbitMQ is used as the message queue for the Chef server, and all items that will be added to the search index repository are first added to this queue. And all messages are added to a dedicated search index repository before they can be used uh, for the general purpose, like uh, you want to use them in your cookbooks and your recipes, and so on. And finally, Postgres, SQL, which is uh, the data storage repository for the Chef server. It is, you can think of it as the database behind all the Chef server repository. So let's take a look at what kind of uh, Chef server types we have. First in the list is the local Chef server. Now this is uh, the component which you install on premise. So let's say I create a virtual machine and I install Chef Server on that, which is on my infrastructure inside my uh, network. That will be called as local Chef Server or uh, also known as on-premise Chef Server. By the way, this is the most common type how 
uh, companies use Chef Server in their premises because this is uh, first of all a standalone. Um, the uh, people will have full control on on this server. The users who are using it, the administrators, will have full control on this uh, server, and uh, it is supposed to be the most secured one because it is inside your infrastructure premises. Next, we have uh, Hosted Chef, which is a uh, cloud hosted. Uh, on Chef by the uh, Chef folks, and it includes configuration support and provisioning assistance. Now, as you know, on-premise, the first one uh, which we saw, Local Chef Server, it's an enterprise version, but implemented within a customer's private infrastructure, right? In case of Hosted Chef, it is uh, hosted on the Chef premise, and you can use it uh, by just creating an account for yourself. Then we have uh, Chef Solo. Chef Solo is basically a command that executes a Chef Client in a way uh, that does not require the Chef Server in order to converge cookbooks. It basically, you know, uh, it simulates the Chef Server environment without having an actual Chef Server. So a centralized API that interacts with and integrates infrastructure components. So all these things are simulated with the help of Chef Solo. So this is especially useful when you are uh, when you don't want to have a full-fledged Chef server, and you want you still want to have that simulation and see how your cookbooks and recipes are going to behave. Then we have um, uh, Chef Automate, which provides a full suite of enterprise capabilities for workflow, uh, node visibility, and compliance. Chef Automate integrates with the open source products like um, Chef Server, Inspec. Habitat, etc. Now, Chef Automate comes with comprehensive 25 by 7 support uh, for the entire platform, including the open source components. And finally, we have uh, AWS OpsWorks, which is uh, a configuration management service uh, that helps you configure and operate applications in a cloud enterprise environment uh, by using Chef and also using Puppet. AWS OpsWorks stacks and AWS OpsWorks for Chef Automate let you use uh, Chef Cookbooks and solutions for uh, configuration management. So you can think of AWS OpsWorks as Chef as an AWS service. So the advantage is you don't have to maintain a Chef server of your own, but you get the full capabilities uh, of the one. Now let's take a look at what exactly uh, we need to do in order to install a Chef Server ro locally on our premises. Uh, the prerequisites are, first of all, you need to have a Linux 64-bit system. Uh, any other format is not supported. You cannot install uh, a Chef Server on a Windows machine. Uh, you cannot install it on a Mac uh, or AIX. Only Linux and 64-bit. There also we have limitations to, with only Red Hat. Uh, SUSE and Ubuntu. So as you can see, these are the only three flavors. Now when we say Red Hat, we also, um, I mean, that also includes CentOS as well because the architecture is same. It's just that licensing part differs when it comes to uh, Red Hat versus SUSE. For the full list, what exactly is the prerequisite and what are the things you can download and uh, what are the flavors supported, you can check out the uh, link given on your screen. In fact, we'll just go to the screen and we'll see how exactly uh, we can download the Chef Server and install. All right, so let's take a look at how exactly we can install and download a Chef Server for our use and how we configure and then uh, you know access the Chef Server. All right, so here I am on um, a machine which I have created for uh, this demo. And uh, this happens to be a EL7, as you can see all on screen. So if I want to be more specific, I can give it. It is CentOS Linux 7.3 core. And uh, this is the IP address of the machine, which we don't need at the moment. Uh, it's just that, just so you know. So basically, we have this CentOS 7 uh, is the version for, for us. So let's take a look at what exactly we can do in order to download that. So 
if you see here, if you click on Chef Downloads, this is the official page for uh, all the Chef component downloads and we need to go to the Chef server, which is over here. And as you can see here, uh, if you talk about the on-premise installations, you have only three flavors, Ubuntu, Sose, and Red Hat as you can see and all of them you can install only on 64-bit uh, architecture so we'll come back to Red Hat and since we have uh, 7.3 is the version so we need to go with the first option so I'll just copy this link and uh, I will come back to my machine for which I have created for this demo let's go to the temp folder <coughs> and uh, let's use uh, wget command to download the package I'm gonna pause the video uh, once the download finishes we will resume again All right, so the download has been completed and uh, if I check, as you can see, I do have a uh, Chef Server core package downloaded already. I just need to change the permissions here. So that I can make it executable, looks better. The next step would be to go ahead and uh, install this package on my system so I can use rpm command to install this this uh, should not take a very long time so once it is complete we need to run another command to initiate the services, uh, create the users, set up RabbitMQ, PostgreSQL, etc. That is going to take a little longer. Alright, so it looks like the installation is complete. So next what we need to do is uh, we need to run this server. So once you install Chef, uh, this command will be available to you. Chef server CTL and the command which we need to run is reconfigure. What this is going to do, this is going to mm, initiate a lot of backend services. It is going to set up RabbitMQ, PostgreSQL, and a lot of other things before our Chef server becomes usable.